Takesha McKitty will remain on life support for at least another two weeks. I'm Christina Howard outside of the Brampton Courthouse with an update on the Takesha McKitty saga. A judge declared today that the family was receiving its third injunction, a chance to keep Takesha on life support and to prevent the hospital from pulling the plug. That gives us a little bit more time, um, I guess a little bit more hope to to continue fighting and hopefully we can get uh, our doctors and um, some more uh, assessments and stuff uh, prepared so we can come back to the court to, to actually uh, uh, present our case a little bit better. The judge granted the injunction to give the McKitty family time to find another medical expert after the doctor they presented was disqualified as an expert witness. The retired American physician wasn't licensed to practice in Ontario and the judge didn't believe he could be impartial after he testified that brain death was created to facilitate more organ donations. Physicians from Brampton Civic Hospital and St. Michael's Hospital believe that the movements to Keisha has been exhibiting, shifting her body, raising her legs, wiggling her toes are just spinal reflexes and not signs of life. In Canada, neuro neurological death, brain death, is declared only when there is no capacity for consciousness, breathing, and there is no brainstem function. McKitty's family believes her movements do involve consciousness, and her lawyer argues that she doesn't meet the criteria for whole brain death. Lawyers we consulted say they can't find a single case like this in Canadian law, but that there is potential for this to go all the way to the top court. These matters can, can go on for years because there is, uh, you can seek leave to appeal to various uh, levels of court as you go higher and higher. So you can go all the way up to the Supreme Court of Canada if you so choose to, which can take a long time. Now the family is expected back in court on November 6th.